Welcome to this segment of my educational series on prosthetics, orthotics, and amputee rehabilitation. My name is Dr. Heike Ustall. I'm a specialist in rehabilitation medicine, and I hope this is an educational and enjoyable video. Thank you. Hey, welcome back. It's Dr. Ustall again. Today's segment will cover prosthetic socket design for amputations above the knee what we call AKA or transfemoral, above the knee amputation, so somewhere between the knee and the hip. Typically they try to preserve as much length as they can with a fair amount of muscle covering that, so generally longer amputation limb is better. The part that goes onto your leg that holds onto you is called the socket, and so let's talk for a few minutes about how that socket is designed. All sockets are made from a casting or molding of your leg, so the prosthetist would use fiberglass or some kind of electronic scanner to duplicate the mold of your leg and then from that mold build the socket. The socket is the top piece here that's custom molded to the shape of your residual limb or your amputation limb. The key thing is trying to figure out where the pressure goes. Unfortunately, because the femur bone is the primary weight bearing bone of the thigh, is cut part way down, you can't really put any pressure on the end of that bone. So we have to bring the pressure way up here to typically the bones that you would sit on. When you're sitting down, you're sitting on a special bone called the ischium and the muscle over it called the gluteal muscle, gluteus maximus. So we use the same kind of idea here that we try to capture that ischium bone that's way up kind of on your butt and then the muscle on your butt to take the pressure. So when we look at an amputation prosthetic device like this, here's the front, here's the back, here's the inside towards the groin, and the outside. So right back here is a special piece that's designed to capture that ischium bone. The ischium, the bone you sit on, slides down inside. This kind of goes right up to the groin, so this is kind of a delicate area for all of our patients with amputation above the knee, this is the primary area for complaints and concerns. We can't trim this too low because if you make it too low, skin and tissue starts to fall out and then it rubs even more underneath and makes more irritation and problems. So we try to bring this edge, this inside edge by the groin, as high as we can, but then we roll it down and keep it smooth. The rest of it really is capturing the limb, preventing the limb from kind of wobbling or moving too much. This is intended to be a nice snug fit. There's almost always a flexible plastic inner shell and then the hard outer shell. The hard outer shell is a carbon fiber lamination. It's, there's a black line that you can see in the socket itself and that is the carbon fiber, layers and layers of carbon fabric to keep it strong and keep it light. But the inner material is meant to flex a little bit, particularly at the edges, and allows us to take this out, make some adjustments, put pads and things in there. Now there oftentimes is another interface material, soft interface, that goes on your skin first before you go into here. Historically, we use socks on your skin, but then we needed a waist belt to hold the whole thing in place. So now the contemporary design typically has a gel liner, a gel material that will go against your skin. It goes on inside out, you invert the gel, put your leg in here and then roll it on and that gel becomes the interface. It can also become the suspension, the process of holding you attached to the prosthesis and there are a variety of ways of doing that. This particular gel liner has a rubber ring or a seal, so this is called a seal in liner. So when this goes inside the socket, it creates an air seal as it goes down Air can blow out through a one-way valve here, and once you get to the bottom, air does not come back in. So it creates essentially a vacuum in there. Now it can be this kind of passive vacuum where you just have a seal and a one-way valve, or there can be an electronic pump with a tube that sucks air out of there and creates an elevated or high negative pressure, which really holds you in there nice and tight. Another way of locking you in place is called a gel liner with a pin suspension. Now we have a similar gel, but we have a gel liner that has a metal pin attached at the bottom, and that pin locks into a hole that's in the bottom of the socket. So the patient would put on their gel liner, exact same way, they turn it inside out, 
invert it. You want to make sure you get the gel directly against your skin, no air bubbles, and then it rolls on. And when the patient steps into the socket, and it locks in place. It won't pull out until you push the button, which releases it to come out. So in this case, the gel liner is the soft interface and it is the suspension mechanism. A similar one to that also has a gel liner with a strap at the bottom. So that strap would come out of a slot or a hole, either here at the bottom end of the socket or up here, because the strap can be attached either to this connector at the bottom instead of the pin or the strap can be glued directly onto the side of the gel liner. So either distal or proximal, a top or a bottom strap can hold you in place. Now because amputation above the knee has so much more soft tissue, meaning skin and muscle and fat, sometimes you really don't need any soft interface material at all. Sometimes we actually put your skin directly into the socket. And there are two ways to kind of get you in there safely. One way is to put a super slippery bag on your leg and then you slide in with that super slippery bag and the bag comes out through a hole in the bottom. So let's say where this valve hole is, this can be removed. Now you have a hole there and you can pull that super slippery bag out of there so nothing is left but your skin directly attached to the inside of the socket. And that kind of an intimate fit will then create both no interface, but an excellent suspension and even better feedback. Your ability to feel and control the prosthesis is oftentimes the best when you have no interface other than your skin inside the socket. Now, many people won't tolerate that or will only tolerate it when they're younger, not when they're older. Anytime you're going to switch from one suspension to another, unfortunately, it likely means you're going to be changing the whole socket because each socket is designed for a specific type of suspension, whether it be a pin or a strap or a seal in with a vacuum or have no gel liner at all. And you and your prosthetist need to talk about what's the best design for you based on how much soft tissue you have, how much cushioning you have, how tender your limb might be, how active you're going to be, how much volume change there is, how much your limb ten tends to swell and shrink. So those are all critical decisions to make and to help to, to figure out what you're going to use for both the soft interface and suspension. Hopefully that answers some of your questions about socket design for above the knee amputees, but realistically these are much more challenging than amputation below the knee. So good luck. Thanks for listening again. It's Dr. Yu.